Okay, we are now live. I'm Gary. I'm Lisa. GaryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Our top story today is what not to do after you've been approved for a home loan. Yes. Don't change your credit in any way. Nothing. Zero. Do not do anything. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, that's today's show. <laughs> you can't imagine the incredible, crazy stories that we have heard. So we thought, you know what? We better do a refresher on what not to do if you are in this season of getting a home loan. So what's the first thing? The number one thing is don't deposit cash into your bank account. They always want to source where the money's coming from. So if you take cash and put it in your account, they're going to say, where'd the cash come from? So that's a big one. Right. Everything has to be sourced, so don't do that. Number two is don't make any large purchases like furniture, a car, appliances. So if you your car breaks down and you need a car, then you don't... Can't go get one on credit <laughs> if right. you're in the middle of getting your home loan. Right. I know you're excited. You want to get your new appliances, your furniture. None of that can happen until after close of escrow. You do not want to use your credit or change it in any way. That's right. Car breaks down, take the bus. <laughs> you're going to have to be getting, I don't know what, like a cheapo car mm -hmm. um, no. that you can pay cash for. Well, no, you don't want to pay cash. because that. Oh, that's right. You take your cash <laughs> out. You take that back. Yeah. So, no car. <laughs> you know, maybe you'll hitchhike with a friend, family member. You know, it's very dangerous to stand out there with your thumb out uh, trying to hitch a ride. You don't want to do that. However, don't buy a car. Just don't fix the one you've even got. I don't know. Well, it depends. You check with your lender, of course, on your, on your specific situation. But generally, if we're just making the point, don't do anything to your credit while you're in this process. That is correct. You know, we heard a joke a long time ago. I don't know if this is an appropriate joke. They said, hey, I just bought a house from somebody else. It's like, great. Hey, I'd go celebrate and go buy a new car. Don't do that. You won't, you won't be getting your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Number three, don't co-sign for anyone for any reason. Again, you're using your credit when you co-sign. So don't co-sign for anyone for any reason while you are in the loan getting process because Whatever debt that cosign loan is, you are also ta uh, taking on. So it will lower your ability to get credit. It is. So if a family member or a friend comes and says, hey, I need you to cosign a car, boat, no matter what it is, you're not in a position to do that. So do not cosign with anybody else for anything. You just can't. It definitely would have an effect on your home loan, and you probably wouldn't be able to go forward and close. Now... Like Lisa said earlier, always check with your lender to make sure. So you're going to want to run everything by your lender and through us. We'll give you clear guidance on what you can and cannot do. But this is the list on what you can't do. Yeah, number four, don't change your bank accounts or your job. So do not change your bank accounts around once you have given all your information because they have to, again, source it back at least 60 days, sometimes farther. Uh, so you don't want to change your bank accounts. And also, don't change your job. You want to show stability in your employment. So if you can, this is not the time to quit your job. Uh, you want to wait till you get your home loan all the way closed. Not just approved for, for your loan, but closed. Because they will call your employer uh, the day or two before funding and make sure that you are still gainfully employed there in the same position for the same salary. Uh, so do not change your bank accounts or your job. That's right. In fact, a story we had this week. Today's Wednesday. This week we've already had a story where we're in escrow. One of our clients totally hates their job. Totally hates it. Found a new job and said, what should I do? We had to tell them, you, you just can't move jobs. I mean, will they save the job until we actually close escrow? And they were like, you don't understand. I hate my current position so bad. I can't stand to go to work. And it's like, you know what? 
hold your nose, go to work, do the best you can every single day. Don't get fired. <laughs> yeah, but you can't quit right now. <laughs> no, don't get fired. Don't quit. I mean, you're going to be the model employee at least until after escrow closes. And then That's if you right. need to change jobs, then be the model employee in your new position. But that just happened. Personal story, right? Yep. Number five is don't apply for any new credit. So don't apply for any new credit cards um, or any store cards or any kind of credit for any reason. So do not change your credit in any way. Yes, so new credit is pretty much across the board. Furniture, everybody wants to buy furniture for their new house and I don't blame them. I mean, you're buying a new house, you're probably gonna make some improvements, paint, flooring, that kind of stuff, and you want the new furniture to go with it. Just do not get any of that stuff prepaid until after close of escrow. That's Once right. again, the lender's going to know exactly what you shouldn't do. We're going over our quick list here yep. of don'ts. Number six is don't close any credit accounts. So you think it might improve your credit to close some old credit cards or things you haven't used in a long time. Do not change your credit in any way. So that means don't close any credit accounts either uh, while you're going through the home purchase process with your lender. Yeah, and a lot of these kind of piggyback on each other. The cash in the account, how you have a rich uncle that wants to help you out, mom and dad want to gift you some funds. You take the money, even if it's in cash, put it in your account, pay off a few credit cards or a few outstanding loans, car loans. You can't do any of that. Isn't that amazing? You just have to stay the course exactly where you are, exactly where you got approved. That's right. You can always talk to your le your lender. Of course, every situation is different. But if you're thinking about refinancing or purchasing a home, give us a call. We have great referrals. We have awesome lenders uh, that can help you, and we'd love to do that. Um, I have the March statistics, the first run at March statistics. If you want to compare, we're comparing March 21 to March of 20. And uh, the I just want to go through one of them real quick is for Ventura County, the average sales price is up 14.36% for the county, and it's up to 856, 856,000 is the average. And the city of Ventura, it's up 22.85%, um, up to 946,000 from 770 last year. And the days on market, of course, is down 40%. It is a great time to list and sell your home. Sellers are getting average four offers on their property, so you have choices on um, the different things that are coming in on the offers, so it's a great time. Yeah, and that's different from last week. The sellers were getting an average of three offers. This week they're getting an average of four offers, and people are getting all kinds of offers. Yeah. Usually we hear a lot more than four offers that are coming in on the property, and the, the percentages are kind of all over too. I mean, you know, January to January was up almost 22%. Now that we're, you know, talking about some March numbers, and these are the beginning of the March numbers, because a year ago, that's when everything got locked down. So, we're finally going to get through those numbers, but everybody kind of feels like they know what's going on. People are getting multiple offers, there's not a lot of homes for sale, they drive through neighborhoods they'd like to live in, <clears throat> excuse me, and there's no homes for sale. I mean, that's a pretty good indication what's going on just by being visual and driving around and saying hey what's going on here a lot of houses these days are going on the market without even any signs going up in front because the sellers just don't want to be harassed and what I mean by harassed is people stop in the car you've seen the signs honey stop the car stop the car go in and knock on the door and say hey we'd like to buy your house and it's like gee we already have several offers so it's not unheard of these days not even have a sign in front of your property. That's how absolutely red hot the real estate market is today. Right, the average days on market now is down to 20 and the median is nine. So that's how fast things are going. So when you are ready to put your home on the market, we need to have a place for you to go. Because <laughs> your house is gonna sell very quickly. We have, uh, my cousin just listed his house for $3 million in Northern California. He sold it. Uh, for 10% over, 300000 over, asking close in seven days. It's going quick. <laughs> and it really doesn't matter what city you're in yep. in the whole United States. So we've got yep. lenders and referrals we can give you everywhere. We also have uh, 
people that we can connect you with that are just absolutely top of their game. Everywhere we go, everybody we talk to, the market's the same. So it doesn't really matter if you're in doesn't really matter. Yep. We're here. Because yep. <laughs> the numbers, I've been watching the numbers all over in all the hotbeds of the different places in the U.S. And, you know, it's just a great time to sell your house. So if you know anyone who's thinking about moving, um, selling a property, has inherited a property, wants to maybe um, diversify an investment property, give us a call. We'd love to talk to you about your specific situation. That's right. And we're always available. GaryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Terrific. That's a wrap.